This part of the tutorial will go over how to work with still images or pictures with iMovie HD. You might want to do this to create a really cool interactive slideshow or maybe just want to integrate live action with still images. So pictures do have a different way of working in iMovie HD. The first thing that you should be aware of is if you get pictures off of the internet, you cannot directly drag and drop a picture from a website into iMovie's clip bin. If you would like a picture from the internet, you have to download it to your computer or just simply drag and drop it onto your desktop or into a folder first. You cannot put it directly into iMovie. It will take a long time for it to load and then eventually it will give you an error message. So keep that in mind. The other thing that you should be aware of is the image quality. So when you are trying to find images to use in a slideshow, and this is true for any kind of presentation, you want to have the highest quality image available. The rule of thumb is the bigger the picture, the better the quality. That means there are more pixels inside. So when you look at some of the pictures I have here, the image quality is really good. I was looking for things that actually were noted as high definition, or when I was doing my Google image search, I was looking for large pictures. Again, the bigger the picture, the better the quality. So when you look at a lot of these images that I grabbed, they are nice and clear. Whereas this image, for example, is not clear. It's a little bit fuzzy, and if I tried to zoom in on this at all, it would look even worse. So the other thing is having this white background block doesn't look very good. So just one of those things, if you want a really good high quality slideshow or you're going to use images at all, try and find stuff that is nice and crisp, clear, easy to see, and also be aware of the size. Because even in this example of the Mona Lisa, we've got these huge black bars on either side. So finding something that's bigger, maybe even made as a wallpaper photo, might be a better option. The last thing I want to show you guys is that when you bring images in to iMovie, they typically all will have the same time code. So if you look in my clip bin here, all of these images are at 10 seconds. So each one of these is preset. I did not mess with this, but I may not think that that's long enough, or maybe it's too long. 10 seconds actually might be a really too long of a time for things to sit there. You will also notice that I'm having things zooming in. So even though this is a still image, when I hit play, it's zooming in on the image. We're going to talk about that in a minute. First thing is I need to put some stuff into my timeline. So I'm going to take this haunted house and drag this down into my timeline. And remember that when you're working with this view, this is the timeline view, it has to go in this top section. These two bottom sections here are for audio, so nothing will go there. Make sure that you carefully place that in the top section. When it is blue, that means it is selected. If I click off of it, it will be kind of a light gray. That means it is not selected. If I want to bring in multiple pictures, I can actually highlight all of these and bring them all in at once. So that's a nice little tip if you're trying to do a change to all of your clips at the same time, you can do that. You can highlight all of them by dragging or you can just hit the keys Apple or Command A. Let's look at how to modify our images. I'm going to use this first one, but I could do all of these at once if I wanted to. So I'm going to select the image that I want to change. I'm going to come over here to my different options and go to media. And media is the area where I can change audio, and that means adding in music, sound effects, things like that, or I can do photos. So we're going to get into the photo section. It automatically opens up my iPhoto library that I have on my computer, but I'm not going to be using those, obviously, I already have some stuff set here. Now, because I have this photo selected, I need to come down here, make sure my photo settings are showing, and I'm going to take the Ken Burns effect off so I can show you guys just how to mess with some of the basic settings. So the first thing is we have kind of a head inside of a frame. This is our zoom in, zoom out. So I can zoom in or zoom out on this picture. And the cool thing about this is I can zoom in and zoom out anywhere on it. So I can move this around. Maybe I want to focus in on this window, not this window. So I can do a zoom and move this over. When you're doing zoom, 
the better quality the picture, the clearer it will look when it's zoomed in. So this is another reason to find some high quality images because of course, if that was this, a really fuzzy picture, this would look very bad zoomed in. Um, the other option I have here, other than zoom in, zoom out, is this one. There's a turtle and a bunny rabbit, and this is basically how long the clip is. So right now, this image is 10 seconds long. If I move this, it can make it longer or shorter. So towards the turtle means the clip is slower, it's longer, or it can be very fast clip, shorter. Right now it's only three frames. That's gonna be a blip, barely gonna be able to see it. So you have to kind of fine tune it and see how long you want that clip to be. You can move this little slider or you can just manually type in, let's say 15 seconds. So maybe I want to play around with the Ken Burns effect. And Ken Burns is a director of documentary films and he came up with, or at least fine-tuned, a technique which is pretty cool. You can take a still image and zoom in, zoom out, or even pan back and forth with it. So if I click on the Ken Burns effect, I can say, where do I want this image to start? I'm going to click here on the Start section, so maybe I want it started all the way zoomed out. And let's make sure that's in the right position. So I want to start zoomed out, and then where do I want it to end? Maybe I want it to end zoomed in to this window, the one light. This could be a great introduction to my movie. Maybe I start out with this scary haunted house and we do a slow zoom in to the windows. Then my next scene is what's taking place inside this room. So I can do a preview here and see if the timing looks right. Because if it's going too fast or too slow, I might want to change how long the clip is. So... That actually looks pretty good, but if I wanted it to be shorter or longer, I can always mess with it here. You can also choose to reverse that. So I could reverse that so it starts out at the window and slowly goes out. You can also do the same thing with the pan. So I could start off zoomed out and maybe it kind of starts on one side here and slowly moves left to right instead of zooming in and out. It can go right to left, left to right. So that could be a cool thing to do as well. But in this case, I think I kind of like this effect of doing a slow zoom into that window. So make sure you have your start and your end points locked in there and you have to hit this update button. If you do not hit update, nothing will happen. So when I hit update, when I go back down here, notice it is updating this clip. It's adding an extra five seconds to it, plus it's adding in that zoom effect that I wanted. So make sure that you have each clip looking exactly as you like it. Always check and make sure that it did what you wanted it to do. Don't just assume. And rule of thumb, whenever you're working with editing software, once you get something to work exactly right, right on the mark, save it. So I'm gonna come up here to File, and save project, or notice there is a shortcut key, which is Command S. iMovie in particular likes to freeze up. So you wanna make sure that you've saved your work. If you don't save for an entire class period, then your video program freezes up. You're gonna to have to redo all of that work. And believe me, it's happened to me. It's probably happened to many of you guys working on other projects. Make sure you get in the habit. Every time something looks good, save it. So let's save it. And while it's saving, you typically don't want to do anything else. Also, another note is that when it's updating a clip with that little red line, don't save it then. Wait till it's finished. Sometimes if you try and save things while your program is working on something, it could freeze things up. So typically let things kind of load up and then work on your next option.